Next competitors from Sacramento, former national champion in his weight class. He was fourth last year at the Ironman. Let's bring out Chris Dim. You know, Bob, to me, this was an important show for two guys. One was Chris Dim, the other one was Mark Dugdale. We're going to get to Dugdale later on. He's having a pretty good night. And, the case, and I say it was important because our careers are kind of at crossroads where it's either time to make it happen or maybe to move on. I can't help but wonder where does Chris go from here because the way it looked in prejudging, it doesn't look like it's going to go his way tonight. No, not at all. Uh, Chris was down in the callouts and down in the uh, third or fourth round, uh, which, was, which was not what he was expecting at all. Uh, he needed to be in that first or second callout. Uh, you can see Chris isn't in bad shape. Uh, his conditioning is good. He's a little bit soft. He's holding just a little bit water. You can see uh, at his last show he was much more hard, much more crisp, and a little bit drier. Um, he, he seems to be lacking that little bit of an edge right now. And like I said earlier, Dan, it's very, very difficult uh, when you're not one of the bigger guys out there to come in even a little bit off. You have to be dead on the money uh, when you're the size of a Chris Dim and Eric Bowie, uh, Jason Arntz. Uh, these guys have got to bring it to the table, and they've got to go with the, with, uh, the conditioning over size. And guys like Chris Dim have the opportunity to sort of take that flag and run with it. The flag, of course, I'm talking about is the one where everybody's trying to get these guys who look like that to uh, take over the sport. And I'd like to see guys like Chris Dim, like David Henry, I'd like to see those guys come in spot on the money every time because there is no margin for error when you're that size and that weight. Now, bodybuilding's a big man's game, Dan. Always has been, always will be. Uh, and you can see that it's evident, very evident when you're at the USA or the Nationals when you have weight class winners that are out there. You're going to see a guy like a Chris Dim who looks absolutely phenomenal on his own until he stands next to a guy like a uh, Omar Deckard you know, who outweighs him by 70 pounds. You simply cannot overlook that much muscle. Uh, but you can see what I'm talking about with the conditioning, Dan, as we're watching uh, right here. Again, the back's a little bit soft. You can see his sides and the oblique areas. Again, it's not that nice, crisp definition that he needs uh, to be in that top five. Now, to Chris's misfortune, he finished fourth here last year. If he were able to finish fourth tonight, that'd be good enough to qualify for the Olympia. Of course, last year it was only a top three show, so Chris is still trying to make his way uh, back to the Olympia stage. Well, I don't know if he's competing next week or not in the uh, Sacramento Pro. Uh, it would be a great show for him. He can actually bring it down. You can see he's not miles away. Uh, you can see his conditioning from the back is actually better from the f than uh, the front. Uh, but he could make that impact and maybe even get into that top three or get the fourth place bump if all three next week uh, have been qualified from today. Sacramento, of course, is in fact uh, Chris Dim's uh, hometown. Let's watch. Chris Dim, ladies and gentlemen.